Greetings everyone. We will start the chapter transpiration today. In this chapter, we will be studying about the process transpiration and its significance. We will learn about a few methods of measuring the process of trans measuring how much transpiration has taken place. One such apparatus with which we can measure is Ganong's photometer. We will be learning that devices working as well as a few limitations that it has. We will also learn about the external and internal factors that affect the rate of transpiration and we will try to compare the two processes guttition and bleeding and get a brief idea about these processes. Well the process transpiration is a physiological process and is very useful for plants. Now this is somewhat related to the previous chapter absorption because transpiration creates the suction force that helps the roots to absorb water. This is a very useful process because this absorption of water and minerals allows the plant to prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. As we have learned in the previous process, previous chapter, sorry, that there are many processes involved that help in absorption of water. Transpiration is one such process that aids in the absorption of water. Its usefulness lies also on this fact that it helps the plant to cool down in a hot weather. There are a number of experiments that we will go through in this chapter that will prove the same for us that how transpiration or whether transpiration really helps for cooling the plant in hot weather okay so let us start uh, let me start with an experiment those of you who have a potted plant in your in your house or if you have a garden in your place try tying up a plastic as is shown in this figure to the potted plant or a twig of any any plant or any tree that you have near your place now after some time you will see leave it for half an hour and then you will see even if you um, like nowadays it's too hot outside so leaving, leaving it for half an hour will be enough but generally if we leave it for an hour or two and then remove the plastic you will see that there are water droplets inside the plastic bag that is the face that had that was towards the leaves that has water on it so that helps us understand that as the plastic was tied tightly around the plant and it was dry before so the plant is somehow the reason for the water that has come after one hour so it is this process of loss of water in the form of water vapor from the leaves and other aerial parts of the plant that we term as transpiration okay so actually transpiration is a process where loss of water vapor takes place in loss of water takes place in the form of water vapor and inside the plastic the water vapor accumulates and they form droplets okay so this is one of the processes with which you can explain or demonstrate the process of transpiration. There is another experiment mentioned over here that is 
you have to arrange these three setups the three bell jars are there the first bell jar will have a plant in it the second bell jar will also have a plant in it but along with a cobalt pa cobalt chloride paper and the third bell jar will have no plant in it but a cobalt chloride paper okay so now this setup a all of these will be covered with bell jars then if we leave it for some time after about half an hour we'll observe that the bell jar a shows water vapor condensing on the inner walls okay the second bell jar would show a similar condensation that there will be water droplets or water vapor on the inner side of the inner walls also the blue cobalt chloride paper would have turned pink in this but this jar will show no significant change the blue color of the cobalt chloride paper will remain blue in this case okay so this this jar the third jar is the control here in this experiment is the control here this tells us that condensation of water vapor has taken place into droplets and change of color in cobalt chloride paper has taken place so this acts as a double visual proof of transpiration earlier we had one visual proof with the uh, when we observed water droplets now we have two visual proofs that is one appearance of droplets on the inner wall and turning of the cobalt chloride paper from blue to pink now let us come to the part where we'll talk about measurement of transpiration that how do we measure transpiration some methods are pretty simple like a weighing method you take a small light weighted potted plant before and after a certain period of time the soil surface should be fully covered to prevent evaporation during this process during this process if you observe that there is a difference in weight that will signify transpiration but for that or rather a uh, improvement in weighing method can be done by using a glass bottle and you can link it with a rubber tube to a graduated side tube now that will demonstrate loss of water through transpiration and this would indicate actually the volume of water loose loss that can be compared with the loss in weight in the weighing machine another weighing experiment a very common one is that take a test tube of water put a, a twig or a plant in it and cover it with oil the oil prevents evaporation of water and after some time if you measure you will find there is a drop in water level so as there are no roots to absorb water that means and uh, evaporation cannot take place so any difference that has taken place in the weight is due to transpiration so now let us move to potato potometer which is a device that measures the rate of water intake by a plant now this water intake is considered to be almost equal to water lost through transpiration that's why we say that potometer is a way of measuring transpiration but actually it measures the rate of water intake by plant okay 
here we will be studying ab about ganong's photometer there are various types of photometer made by various scientists so let us see the structure of the photometer and try to understand what it is what we do is we take a twig of some suitable plant and fix it in the apparatus if you see that the entire apparatus is filled with water in such a way that there are no water air spaces present then an air bubble is voluntarily introduced into this horizontal graduated capillary tube you can see that this is a capillary tube when it is graduated there is a scale and here a what bubble here a bubble is introduced voluntarily now this horizontal graduated capillary tube is dipping into the beaker, beaker containing water now how can you introduce the air bubble you have to be very careful and lift the capillary tube slightly above the surface of water so that only one air bubble gets in the process is extremely difficult and it will be quickly dipped back into the water now as the transpiration proceeds water is lost from the twig so which means that a suction force is established now this suction force will pull the water from the beaker because that is the source of water so the readings on the capillary tube will actually give the volume of water lost in a given time do you understand this what happens is the air bubble as water will be pulled up the air bubble will move and the reading in the graduated tube that is how far the air bubble has moved that actually tells us that how much water has been absorbed by the plant the air bubble can be brought back to its original position by releasing some more water from the reservoir into the capillary tube now let me repeat that photometers do not measure the water lost they actually measure the water intake some of the water now why ganong's photometer is said to be not an accurate device because some of the water is used by the cells to carry out other processes for example photosynthesis so water intake is not absolutely equal to the water lost by transpiration but photometer assumes this that they are same now the precautions that we need to follow in the use of photometer is it should be made completely watertight and the twig should be cut obliquely so that larger surface is provided for the water intake and under water uh, larger surface should be there to avoid suction of an air bubble into the twig because if that happens then absorption of water will stop we also talked at the beginning of the chapter that we learn about the limitations in the use of photometer the first limitation as i mentioned is the introdu introduction of the air bubble it's very difficult it's not very easy to introduce just one air bubble in a capillary tube the next is about the twig now you can understand that transpiration is a gradual process it will take time to come to a decision of how much water has been absorbed or how much water has been lost so it takes a lot of time and the twig may not remain fully alive for that long a time also any change in the outside air temperature will affect the position of air bubble so that will not give us a correct 
observation a correct result for our water intake okay so that's it for today we will complete this chapter in two more sessions the next session will be about kinds of transpiration where we learn about three different types stomatal cuticular and lenticular transpiration and the last type will be or the last class will be about significance of transpiration and gutition and bleeding okay that's it for today thank you